Hello and welcome to another Tech Distractions video. For this project we're looking at a gaming PC from around 1997 and checking out its performance in DOS and Windows 95. Games were being released for both platforms and it was an exciting time for PC gaming. Hardware choices were interesting, as typified by this local ad. Many vendors used the same board and base setup and focused on the CPU being the differentiator for most mainstream and budget options. The Pentium 2 was often sold as a high-end option for enthusiasts. The MMX Tech option Looks like the type of rig I would have loved back then, complete with a 2D-3D combo from Creative, the 3D Blaster PCI 4MB, featuring the Rendition Veritai 1000 chipset. One of the very first to support 3D accelerated Quake, in fact, VQuake. These were typically sold for around two to $300 Australian at the time, and competed with Matrox Millennium and Matrox Mystique, and the 4MB based S3 Verge based combos. They also competed with the 3DFX Voodoo 1, which was not a combo card, but was extremely popular and a little bit more expensive. So for my build today, with a nod to 1997 and 2D 3D combos, we too are using a VX based Socket 7 motherboard that would have been popular with the mainstream, a PC Chips M549. It's got 64 megabytes of SD RAM, which would have been more common in a Pentium 2. Unfortunately, this was the smaller stick I had on hand. 32 meg would have been my choice otherwise. Storage is a similar story. I've gone with a 16 gig SD card mounted from an ID to SD adapter, which I put in a 3D printed holder. This is booted by an XT-IDE ROM sitting on a Realtek Ethernet card. Sound is surfaced by the good old Sound Blaster 16 value. A little bit dated by 1997, but I do prefer it over the Opti 16 that I had on hand, as the Sound Blaster value has a proper OPL3 and that trademark noisy DAC, which I think is befitting of a PC of this time. You'll note that I have a 3D printed holder for this one as well. It's because I purchased this card off an eBay seller who saved the card from landfill. The graphics card is a Diamond Viper 330, based on the NVIDIA Reva 128. Although the Reva 128 was released on April Fool's Day in 1997, it was no joke. The V330 was released a little bit later, around August 97, and appeared in Australian stores towards the end of that year for around about 310 Australian dollars, or 200 US dollars at the time. Reva stood for Real-Time Interactive Video and Animation Accelerator, and the 128 refers to the 128-bit memory and core. Although it was Nvidia's third graphics core, the previous two were not very successful. The NV3 was the one that really kickstarted Nvidia to a true contender in the 3D space. The Reva 128 dropped the proprietary Nvidia API, which only had support in a handful of titles, and instead was fully compliant with Direct3D, and, although it didn't openly advertise it, OpenGL 1.0. What's more, the Reva 128 had excellent DOS compatibility thanks to a nice and fast RAM DAC with VBE 3.0 support. So let's see it in action.
Let's look at some benchmarks using DOSBench, compiled by Phil's Computer Lab. 3D Bench gets 164.1 frames a second. Chris's 3D Bench gets about 44.3 frames per second. PC Player gets 22.3 frames per second. Doom gets 87.56 frames per second. I didn't run any video speed up or utilities, and I'm confident with some tweaking you could easily beat the scores that I've got here. But I feel these are good enough just about to run any DOS game without needing to lower any settings. I'll flash up speed sys output for those that are interested as well. Booting into Windows, we have CPU Z Vintage Edition, which detects our MMX200 and running the benchmark reveals the CPU is in line with a standard reference MMX200. There's no overclocking here. We now take a look at some Windows 3D games using the DirectX and OpenGL acceleration. First up is G-Police, and despite the low frames per second, the game actually runs pretty smooth. In 1997 the focus wasn't really on frame rate, most people were just happy if the game played without interruption. Quake 2 really shines on the Reva 128. You can run high resolution with smooth gameplay. The image quality and colours are quite nice too in my opinion. Next is Forsaken, a game I regularly use on Windows 9X testing. The colours and textures look nice and performance is good on a variety of hardware. Last up is Wipeout XL. This one doesn't get very good frame rates even at very low resolution, but the game does still feel smooth and is playable. It just pushes this combo just a little bit too hard. Freddy Mark 99 Max is not kind to this setup either. Very low frame rates in the racing scenes. First person shooter is also a bit too much. Texture bump mapping and renders look okay though. So time for a wrap up. This combo of MMX200 and Reva128 PCI delivers excellent DOS compatibility. It represents a common mid-range game machine from 1997. We didn't get amazing benchmark results. But again, it wasn't really important back then. People just wanted to play the latest games, didn't mind changing a few settings here or there. While the Reva 128 was definitely not going to be the best PCI 3D card, it was a very good start from Nvidia, and it was important in paving the way for the next Reva card, the TNT. I reckon I would have been pretty happy with this back in 1997, especially as at the time I was only rocking a Pentium 120 and a Seng Labs ET6000 combo, which really couldn't do anything except 2D, and had no hardware 3D capability at all. So that brings us to the end. I hope you've enjoyed exploring this project with me and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.